to start out, you're going to want to have a dedicated space um, for all of your equipment scale. Um, I used a nail file, or you could use an emery board. Some people use a razor blade um, to shave the pills. I used a pill splitter too, just like when I was trying to get smaller reductions. Hi, I'm Dr. Joseph with Daring. It's my pleasure to be joined by Dr. Christy Huff here. And uh, many of you probably may know of Christy. She sits on the, the um, I guess, the I think it's Board of Directors, I, I imagine, for, for BIC, uh, Benzodiazepine Information Coalition. Maybe I got that wrong. Correct me if I did. <laughs> I'm actually the medical director. So. You're the medical director, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, and um, while we're not going to go into Christy's story, uh, you know, in, in this video, she does have a history of protracted withdrawal injury from benzodiazepines, and she tapered herself using a very, um, uh, I guess, well-known method that can seem a little bit daunting for some, and that's uh, doing dry cuts. And, um, and so Christy is going to kind of walk us through how she did this, um, and it really is a great option if you want to avoid going to a compounding pharmacy because obviously that costs money. So this is this is great for those who want to do that. And um, actually, Christy, tell me, did you do cut and hold or did you do daily micro taper with um, your um, dry cuts? Well, actually, I did both. So I started out at 15 milligrams of Valium after I crossed over from the equivalent amount of Xanax. And then I started trying to follow the Ashton protocol. So just used a pill splitter to do traditional cut and hold. And even her recommended reductions were too large. So I just, I kind of went to about half what she recommended, but it was still things, reductions I could get with a pill splitter. And so I did that all the way till around seven milligrams I did um, cut and hold. And when I got to below um, half a milligram of Valium cuts, like I wanted to go to a quarter or 0.25 milligram cuts. So that's at the point that I started using the scale because it's um, it's pretty easy to quarter a pill with a pill splitter. But once you get, if you're trying to cut a pill in eights, it's hard to really get um, any sort of accuracy with that. So, so mm -hmm. you can even do, you know, um, some of these larger cuts using the scale as well. And so that's how I kind of got my start with that. But then even, um, when I got around halfway through the taper, even these little quarter milligram cuts were too big for me. And so that's when I switched over to the, the um, micro taper. And, and, and when you say micro taper, is that like daily, like each day there was a, a different um, dose? Yeah, so I think micro taper is just sort of a catch-all term to, it can mean daily reductions, but some people um, make cuts, you know, every two to three days and still consider that a micro taper. Actually, that's how the math kind of worked out in my own taper is I would make mm -hmm. reductions anywhere every, you know, between two to three days because the the way the pill weights worked out, if you cut um, 0 0.001 grams every day, which was kind of like the smallest amount of reduction that I could do, then that would have been more, it would cut more than I wanted to in the span of a month. So you can definitely, you know, space those out. Um, where it's not that's that's a good that's a good point okay yeah yeah um and so i guess yeah it's a, it's a limitation of the scale and just also probably like how precisely you can do it you know because if you're doing very small cuts every single day you know that and and really trying to make it super precise i i imagine you know with like a file there's a limitation to that as well so to kind of you know do it in you know three or four day blocks something like that probably allows you to roundabout kind of get it right for those those three or four days right exactly and there is some you know amount of variability with this where you're it's, you're not you know this is there's a little you know the depending on the scale you have the accuracy is going to vary and so mm -hmm. yeah sure Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to you now and just kind of ask you, like, how do you teach someone how to do this? You know, when they get to that level where they're really low and cut and hold isn't working anymore, what's like, like, yeah, how do you like, what do they need? How do they do it? Just wherever you want to start. Yeah, so um, I started out actually with this um, s small jeweler scale that measured out to 0 0.001 grams. So it measures out to three decimal points. I believe the brand is Gemini and I got it off Amazon. 
Um, and you're basically just, and then later on, I went to a lab grade, grade scale that measured out to four decimal points just because I felt it was more accurate. And actually, I had a, a friend of mine that was done with his taper, and he just mailed it to me for the price of um, shipping so I didn't have to, because they're fairly expensive. Uh, but I know other people who've been able to use a, you know, just a traditional jeweler scale like this that they get off Amazon, and they've done that the whole way down. Some people might purchase two um, scales. Um, so they can compare the numbers that they're getting and maybe average between them. Um, so there's there's kind of different ways that people do this, but I think, you know, mainly the overarching principles are the same. So I think, you know, to start out, you're gonna wanna have a dedicated space um, for all of your equipment, um, just so that you not have to um, set it up um, very often. And it's good to just get all your equipment in place before you get started. So have your scale. Um, I used a nail file, or you could use an emery board. So people use a razor blade um, to shave the pills. Um, you can, I use a pill splitter too, just like when I was trying to get smaller reductions, I would cut the pill with a pill splitter to kind of get an approximate size of what I wanted before I did the shave so I wouldn't wasn't you know shaving an entire pill to get one tiny little chunk if that makes sense um, some people actually crush and weigh their pills um, so you might need a, a spatula or um, you know just some empty pill capsules to weigh your powder into it's good to have uh, obviously you're gonna need your medication as well and then one of these little weighing boats is helpful to, to put the pill or the powder in when you're weighing it. So that's your basic supply. So it's good to have that all um, set up before you get started. And it's good to have it in an area that's free of drafts or and make sure everything's yeah. clean. Cause yeah, so these scales are really sensitive. They'll pick up any air. So you can't just put it under the air conditioning vent or under a ceiling fan or something like that because it'll you'll see the number just <laughs> keeps jumping up and down so you need to make sure there's no drafts where you have it and and they also um you know like this one has a little um cover so that protects somewhat from air so after you do that um you've got it all set up um definitely read the instruction manual for your particular scale because they're all going to have maybe some differences to them like some require warming up and like how long does it take to warm them up and so you and then what's their level of accuracy that's all of information that you would want to know um, before you got started and and then after that you're just gonna start the weighing process the way i did it was every um every week so i would have a pill sorter you know that went seven days of the week and i would measure out my doses for each of those days and I would write everything down on a calendar. I just used a blank Apple calendar that I printed off my computer um, and then I would write down the daily desired um, dose and of course there's a little bit of math. And is that like like at the start of the month you go I'm going to taper by two percent you know over these things and then you kind of mapped it out that way where it's like a 30th of what two percent is in whatever milligram you just were kind of minusing it off the top yeah so you generally people calculate the rate they want to go on a monthly basis uh, a lot of people do it by a percent i actually just did it by um the amount of dose that i wanted to cut that month usually it was around a quarter milligram was kind of my goal. And of course, it, it's adjustable. So you can start out with a rate and if things go south, you can always slow it down or if things going well, you can speed it up. So it's it's definitely meant to be flexible. And um, so, I mean, there were times mm -hmm. where I would just throw a hold in there if, if I was having some severe symptoms and then I would just resume at a, a smaller rate. And then what I would do is I would go through and I would calculate so, okay, I want to cut a quarter milligram of Valium in a month. So how many, you know, 0 0.002 gram cuts do I need to make in a month to make that happen? Um, and mm -hmm. for me, my pill weight, I believe it was 
10 cuts in a month. So I was cutting every three days, 0 0.002 grams. And when I say 0 0.002 grams, that was the actual pill weight and not the dose of the medication. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a big thing to know is you need to convert to know what dose you're cutting. You need to convert from the weight of the pill um, to the actual dose of medication. Because remember a pill, um, it's not just active medication. There's also a lot of filler to it. So that's going to, uh, you know, give you the total weight of the pill. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is, you know, some, people talk about like weighing multiple different pills to get like an average. Is that something that, that you did as well? Yeah, I did. And actually I was, that was the next thing I was going to get to because I sort of skipped over that part. Um, you do need to know the average weight of your pill. I've got a, this is a Zofran because I won't touch a benzodiazepine ever again in my life. Yeah. But um, it, little, nice little white round pill. It doesn't look too much different um, than Valium. But what you do is people will weigh between 10 to 15 pills to, and, uh, you know, I remember when I weighed mine, mine was, a, I believe, the activist generic formulation of diazepam. And there, there was maybe between 0 0.002 to 0 0.004 milligrams of, or sorry, grams of variability between the pills. So it wasn't huge, but so I felt comfortable just weighing um, 15 pills and, the, and then just average, taking an average weight. And then all of my calculations were based off that average weight. And I believe 0.160 was the average weight of one of my diazepam pills. So mm -hmm. I just based all my calculations off of that. And I would reweigh every time I got a new batch, you know, a new bottle of pills in just ma to make sure that it was consistent. And it, it seemed to be consistent without throughout the taper. And I just made sure to stick with that same um, generic formulation all the way throughout my taper. So there were no, you know, surprises with that. Mm-hmm. And, um, okay, so, and I was okay, yeah, so one mm -hmm. other, one other thing that people do sometimes, um, is they'll crush their pills and weigh out the powder. Um, just thinking that maybe that might be a little more accurate, like, because I think some people worry that the medication is not distributed equally throughout the pill. Like maybe you're shaving off one part of the pill and that's there's more medication over there versus there's more filler on this other side. And I didn't feel like that was an issue for me in my own taper. It seemed like my body was pretty sensitive. So I think I would have known if it had been some major reduction or inaccuracy. And it, it felt like, you know, I never ran into that problem, but there are some people that worry about that. So they'll take maybe, um, you know, 10 to 20 pills and, crush them and then, and then work from that batch and, you know, you know weigh up, out the amount of powder that, um, that they want to get that particular reduction. So just tossing that out there is an option, I think, that people sometimes do. What's more popular just from what you've seen in your experience, like the kind of grinding off pill fragments or the crush, you know, 20 and then make a batch of powders from there? Yeah, I mean, I would say that probably the the just cutting straight off the pill is more common just because it's i think it's easier I, myself a little less yeah. messy maybe and well, then I you're not losing less. a lot of like residual on the side of the mortar and pestle i guess whatever yeah. you're using to kind of or i don't know maybe people just smash them up between pieces of paper i'm not i'm not sure what they're yeah, doing yeah i mean I've, I've heard of people using a mortar and pestle and yeah to me it just yeah. seemed messy and unnecessary i would have done it if i had concerns that there were issues with the distribution of the the active ingredient throughout the pill but i didn't really feel like it came to came into play i think these you know the the way they manufacture medications is uh, pretty homogenized so I don't know. Yeah, for, they for probably mix own... it reasonably well. Yeah, for my own. Like purpose. you said, you would have noticed, right? If if it was, yeah. you probably would have would... noticed you were so sensitive. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would have noticed. So, so yeah, but but yeah, I just wanted to throw out there because you know there there are different ways of doing this, and everybody kind of has to find their own way that they're comfortable with and works best for them. 
And so you probably remember this, I imagine you do. The uh, 1.6 milligram tablet, was that was that a five or a two? You know, which which tablet of diazepam was that? Oh, yeah, I guess I should have said that was my, my t- I was working off two milligram of diazepam at that point because okay. I was pretty low in my my taper. I was on I used the two milligram pills for probably most of my taper. I was only on the fives for maybe the first third. And then I got rid of those and went to the twos. Okay. All right. So what someone's going to do is, you know, so they're, they're working on the twos. So let's say, you know, they're cutting from six milligrams of Valium. You know, you're just going to take the two tablets just as, you know, as they come manufactured, right? If that's kind of where you want to tape it down from. And then you get that, that other two, which you have, you're going to weigh like 10 to 15 of them enough. And then it's probably going to equal around 1.6 milligrams. And then um, I guess right at the start, you probably don't really need that pill cutter, right? Because where, where you like are halving it and quartering it, it because, you know, you're just taking off like a fraction of it. So maybe you just like one, two, three, and then that's enough for your dose. And then I guess as you get lower and it's like, now your dose is like a quarter of that tablet or a little less than a quarter, you would just kind of snap them in half with that pill cutter, discard the three quarters and get that final quarter and just be like, I'm going to now work with this and just kind of do it like that. Is that sort of? Yeah, exactly. So it, it just depends on what your goal dose is. If your dose is, you know, 1.9 milligrams, you're going to start with the two milligram pill and shave from that. But if you're, you know, under, say you're like, your goal dose is getting down to 0.9 milligrams. So you're just going to snap it in half because one milligram is way closer than, you know, point. Yeah. And you're not shave, you, you're not kind of working it and just shaving yeah. half of the, the tablet down when you yeah. could just kind of just, just cut that piece off relatively well. Yeah. I'm um, very minimalistic and I'm all about like less work. So anything that I could do to, to make the process easier. And, and I've, um, you also get really good at eyeballing. Like you could just take a pill chunk and be like, oh, this is close to 0.7 milligrams. You've got pretty good at eyeballing sizes. And then the scale is just the tool to get it exactly right, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, I think that's kind of like the nuts and bolts of it. Um, I mean, am I missing anything? Are there any other kind of points that seems pretty clear to me? Yeah, I'm just trying to, looking at my list of if there's any other, I mean, I do think the math seems complicated and it's actually not really that complicated. So I'd just say don't oh, yeah. be. To, talk, talk us, so talk us through that. Like, um, I, th- I think you kind of said it, right? You know, with, with yours, it was like you would just, I guess we're basing it off one one 1.6, right? And then you'd say, okay, if 1.6 is two milligrams and you want to go down by a quarter milligram, that's like an eighth of of that, right, in in 30 days. And so you'd calculate, you know, you know you'd say, okay, this is 1.6 is, you know, the full weight of a two milligram tablet. And now I need to, you know, find out what an eighth of that weight is. And then you would divide that kind of you'd say oh how many how many cuts would i need to make in 30 days to kind of get get me down is that sort of the process yeah i mean that's sort of what i did i actually ended up making a little conversion chart um on my spreadsheet where i could i could look and it was like 0. 0.160 of pill weight was equal to two two milligrams so that means 0. 0.08 is equal to Uh, one milligram and and kind of so on just so that I could easily kind of make those conversions. So I knew that um, 0.25 milligrams, if I wanted to cut that in a month, that was equal to 0.02 grams of pill weight. And so then I was like, okay, how many cuts do I need to make in a month if I'm doing 0.002 gram cuts? How many of those cuts do I need to make? And so if it's... um, you know, for that weight, it would be like 10 cuts in a, in a month of the 0.002. And then that would get me, I would make a total of 0.25. Yeah. So the other thing that's coming to mind is, 
Do you think you need one of those more technical jeweler's scales that cost several hundred dollars if you're, let's say you wanted to do this with clonopin, right? And you want kind of more precision, obviously, like the tablets are smaller. It's not like diazepam where, you know, you're still like for two milligrams of diazepam, which is a very low dose of diazepam, you still have the full tablet, you know? And so, I mean, is that something that people run into with this with this method if they're like using, say, something like clonopin? Yeah, so I... <laughs> I think you can. It just depends on your scale and also how sensitive to you are. I will say that diazepam or Valium is much more forgiving because of that long half-life. So even though sometimes I might have shaved a little bit too much or, you know, wasn't completely accurate, I felt like it it was probably going to be a little bit more forgiving than Clodopin. And I will say with these scales that you can get off Amazon that just have the three decimal points, you know, that third decimal point, that number would, it drove me crazy because it would just flip around a lot. It would go up, it would go down. And it's like, okay, what, how can I get a 0 0.001, you know, cut with any accuracy or even 0 0.002 because it just, um, so I like personally having the com comfort of that fourth decimal point um, because even that number would kind of flip around on the on the big lab grade scale. And so and I would just kind of round it whichever direction up or down, you know, so that I knew that third decimal point was pretty solid with the lab grade scale, whereas I didn't really feel that comfortable with it on the, you know, the Gemini scale that I was using. Um, again, some people are able to get by with that and because the, the problem with these lab grade scales is they're expensive I mean, we're talking like a thousand plus dollars. So it's a big investment. I mean, you might be able to get one used from someone that's finished their taper and, you know, have a friend like I did. I don't, I mean, looking back, would I have spent that amount of money on this scale? Maybe I would have, but, um, you know, but when I had the chance to get it from a friend, I just, I did. And then I didn't really look back. It was just, it was just so much more comfort in knowing that these measurements were much more accurate. So I so guess you, every so person you, is going to have to decide, you know, what their comfort level is and financial level and is everything. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. And so I guess the other thing I wanted to ask you, okay, so it sounds like you, I mean, it sounds like it's probably, you could definitely do it with Clonopin and Xanax. It just might be a little bit more fiddly um, just because this, you, you're working with like a less sizable tablet. And so you probably want to be more careful. Um, and, but yeah, so, and then maybe want to get that higher quality scale. The The next question is, why not liquid liquid taper? What was you know? Because I'm sure you'd heard about it, or maybe you were already kind of doing this when when people were doing liquid tapers. What made you pick this one versus liquid? Yeah, so I already had some comfort level with the scale because, like I said, I'd already been using it for to make the smaller cuts using a cut and hold taper, um, and then I also felt like it was I was changing less variables that way because if you switch to say the commercial formulation of diazepam or even you're dissolving a tablet in water it, it feels like it to me it felt like it was maybe your body might respond to it a little bit differently and it might feel like a, a cut or you might get withdrawal symptoms and in fact you know we recommend that if you're going to be switching to a um, liquid formulation you know we treat that as a, a cut and you just need to hold that for a couple of weeks until you feel like you're steady and ready to, um, you know, resume your taper. But, but yeah, I mean, just for me, it seemed to be working and it was kind of like, if it's not broke, then don't fix it. And, and I was also just terrified of making any changes, you know, like anything in this is terrifying, adding new medications or, I mean, you just never know how your body's going to react. And so I was, I just, to me, it felt like the cautious route. And as, and, and I was, what, as it was working, I was like, let's, let's do this. Yeah. What's the word in the community um, in terms of how, how to transition people from uh, tablets to liquids? Like, is it, because I know in the Ashton 
manual, you know, there's this very kind of gradual crossover. Like, how do you advise people or how, how have you seen people advised to do the transition? Like, is it, like, is it, a, you know, can some people just swap one out for the other? Do some people do it over, you know, a couple of months? Like, what what's the right way to do that from what you've seen? And there may not be a right way, but if you could just say kind of what what you see being done and what you think is probably uh, the standard. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's, I've seen really a lot of different approaches. So I, I don't even presume to say necessarily what the standard is. There's some people that just transition fully to liquid. I know there's some people that actually do a mix of tablets and liquid. So they're like maybe most of their pills are say they're on like 10 milligrams of tablets. Well, maybe nine milligrams worth is with tablets and the other milligram is what they're, you know, working from for their um, liquid tapers, you know, something like that, where it's not, Mm -hmm. not a hundred percent liquid that they're dealing with. So, I mean, there's just, I think different approaches and I won't claim that I'm an expert on the liquid taper portion of it just because I didn't do that myself. So, but yeah, I have seen, and then some people do, um, you know, where they dissolve their pills in, you know, whatever liquid type they choose. Sometimes it's water or milk. And then some people use the actual commercial formulation that you can get from the the pharmacy. And, you know, some people do that from the beginning of their taper. And then some people wait kind of like me when things are getting, you know, pretty dicey and, you know, and the taper and the doses are getting lower. And then that's the point that they switch over. So really it's just everyone takes a different approach. Yeah, that's great. Um, Yeah. I mean, to me, it makes a lot of sense, you, you know, to do that. I know when you were saying with liquid, it's like to do the the half and half, you know, where you could have, you know, half, you know, or maybe even, you know, the majority of your dose in a tablet and a little bit in a liquid. So you're not carrying back, you know, big bottles of liquid from the compounding pharmacy. You just kind of do little bits at a time. Um, okay. So, well, this is very informative. Is, is there anything else that we've missed or anything else that you think people – need to know about um, this method. Yeah, I just, I made out a list of tips. So I'm just going to make sure that we covered everything. Um, one other thing I had written down is that it's a good idea to keep the scale very clean because in, even a little bit of dust can throw off your measurements. So I had one of those um, bottles of compressed air like you can use for to clean your comp- computer care board, keyboard you can get it like an office supply store or, or something like that and i would just you know squirt the air and make sure all the dust um, was off so that i was getting an accurate measurement and you know we talked about reading the instruction manual and having a dedicated area and then, you know, there's some people who shave their pills, you know, one day at a time. Like, again, again, I like to just have it set up for the week so I can forget about it. Um, and then, you know, it's up to you how you want to record it. But I would definitely suggest, you know, some kind of calendar, journal, notebook. Um, some people, um, you know, do an Excel spreadsheet. I never, you know, I didn't really carry the math to to that level so i just kind of scribbled some notes on my calendar and that was about it um and yeah i think i think that's pretty much all i've got well that's perfect that's uh i mean that's how long were you tapering for how many years uh it was three years two months and 20 days but who's counting? okay th- three years of wisdom and you know in 30 minutes there, there we go um but exactly. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording now. But just say, you know, Christy, thank you so much, and this was awesome. I really appreciate you sharing this with my audience. <laughs>